Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be available to you, for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our show archives. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to watch, so please spread the word about Encompass Live with anyone you think might be interested in any of the shows we have. Um, if you are not a Nebraska library, um, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries here in the state, um, so similar to your state library. So we provide services and training and resources and databases and grants and all sorts of things to all types, types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, public, academic, um, K-12 schools, uh, corrections, museums, archives, uh, really our only criteria is that it is something to do with libraries. Um, something cool we think they might be, uh, they could be doing, um, something cool they are doing. We have um, guest speakers that come in Encompass Live from um, all across the country uh, sometimes, and we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations for us on the show. And that is what we have today. Um, it is the last Wednesday in August. Oh my gosh. Which means where did August go? Summer is almost over, but butterflies. We're gonna still have butterflies. Yes. Yeah. Don't care. Yeah. <laughs> but because it's the last Wednesday of August, it is pretty sweet tech day. Um, yeah. Every last Wednesday of the month, Amanda Sweet, who is our technology innovation librarian here at the Library Commission, she comes on the show. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. And she talks about something tech related. Um, we do show other shows other times in the month sometimes on techie things, but you can always depend the last Wednesday of the month, it will be Amanda with us. Sorry. And today we have what I hope is going to be a very fun thing, making um, a micro bit butterfly wand. Yeah. Sounds, it had to be done. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sounds fun and magic and techy all at once. I like that combo. Oh, uh, yeah. So I will just hand it over to you, Amanda, to tell us how we all can do this for ourselves. Sweet. So this one, I picked it because, one, it's pretty easy to do, and two, it is... It's just awesome. I mean, who doesn't want to make a butterfly wand? <laughs> and I use, so I use butterfly as the example, but you can use pretty much anything. Like mm. You could make a dragon wand, you could make a whatever you want to. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that actually makes it a butterfly wand is I got this little applique and this was like maybe three or $4 on Amazon. And they also have it in like a lot of different fabric stores. And this is the basis of the wand, along with this little, uh, over Valentine's Day, I got a cake pop from a bakery, and then I just kept mm -hmm. the cake pop stick. And <laughs> so, <laughs> so I washed it, don't worry, I yeah. washed it, yeah. So this is like the baseline of what the wand act is actually made out of, along with this little micro bit. So mm -hmm. in this session, we're actually going to go over what exactly this micro bit is, the materials mm -hmm. that you need to gather up. And I already wrote the code for this, so you can actually just download the files that I made oh, and nice. use them for your own project. And I'll also show you how to um, customize that code if you want to get fancy later. So with this project, you don't actually have to write any code at all. You can just download it and you're good. I'm but sure that you, would be the first concern yeah. or question that anyone, me included, would it have. It always is. Yeah, yeah. And that's actually why. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. And that's actually why I just made the code ahead and downloaded it because so many people asked in previous projects if yeah, I could just download it and they could use it. Mm -hmm. One, because when libraries wanted to set this up for demonstrations, mm -hmm. you don't always have time to write your own custom code when you're just building a demo for something. Sure, so sure. 
some libraries have used this as like a demo project when they're doing like a tech fair or they've set it up in a school mm -hmm. classroom. Um, someone, someone said they actually used it for um, um, parent teacher days. So it was mm -hmm. a, like a teacher that was trying to introduce coding in schools and classrooms and they just greeted every parent with a wand. And I was like, I love that. <laughs> so let's dig into this is a this micro bit on the screen is actually bigger than the one that you actually will get in the kit. Like the micro bit itself just looks like that. Hmm. And I have a little battery pack attached to it so that you can power up your micro bit. And this is basically just a little computer board. If you've yeah. heard of like um, Arduino or Raspberry Pi, this is like the simplified version of it for, I, you could say for younger users, but anyone can use it. Like it's been used in colleges, it's been used in elementary schools, it's been used mm -hmm. in um, kindergarten classrooms. Like it's a really versatile thing. And you can code it using the make code, which is that drag and drop block editor. If you've seen the scratch block programming, it's basically that. You drag a, bra a block over and it tells the, mm -hmm. like it tells the little computer what to do. And the cool thing is that, let me grab this over here. So this is the actual coding environment and this is just a website that you go to. So mm -hmm. you go to Microbit's main page and go into their code section and I'll open up the butterfly wand thing on here. So this is what the blocks actually look like. And then it will kind of prototype what it'll look like on the left-hand side. And you can also flip over to see what this would look like in JavaScript. Nice. So if people are curious about what this actually looks like in text, it's just a quick click to the side and you mm -hmm. can see it in JavaScript or in Python because this is made by Microsoft and Microsoft knows all. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just kind of a cool way to transition over from this awesome block thing mm -hmm. over to the code curious to see what it might look like. And, but for the most part, like if you stick with blocks, you're good. Like I'm willing to bet that in the next five or 10 years, even like complex robots and manufacturing teams are gonna be coded using this drag and drop block. In fact, a lot of them already are. Mm -hmm. So you're good to go. But back to the butterflies. So let me drag this back on over here. So that's the little rundown of what the micro, like the micro bit board itself is. And this is just a quick listing of what you would actually need to put this all together. So the micro bit kits, if you are a Nebraska library, I actually circulate these through the tech kits or the mail. So you don't actually have to purchase these yourself. You can check them out from the library commission. I'll send them over to you and you can do this project. I just ask that you not super glue anything to the board because that would make me sad. <laughs> you know, people will be reusing this stuff later. Right. So all this stuff is designed so that you can reuse the board later. And even if you're not checking this out, um, you'll still want to be able to reuse the board in your own library. So don't super glue stuff. And this is a link to the actual kit that you'd be getting. Um, hey, it's on sale now. I call that a win. Nice, so, perfect timing. Yeah. yeah. So this is like the basic starter kit that comes with the, that runs with the micro bit. And mm. this is everything that you would need to be able to do this project and most of the projects that are on micro bits main website. So if you are a non-Nebraska library, or if you are a Nebraska library that wants to get your own dedicated kit, this mm -hmm. is a good option to go. That's not too, even full price, that's not too much. I mean, $40, depends on how no, many you need for how many projects, you, if you're moving a reusable yeah. thing, sure, but if you're moving something you're gonna uh, give out or have a, yeah. a larger group, um, yeah. 
and it actually comes with the little case too. So I didn't even have to get that little case separate if they sent it. Perfect. And if you want to do more advanced projects. Oh yeah, Hummingbird. The Hummingbird, we also circulate the Hummingbird Bit Premium Kit, and this also runs on the Microbit. So again, if you're a Nebraska library, you can just check this out for free. We'll send it over to you. All you do is pay the return shipping. So yeah, you can use this one if you want to try out more advanced projects or try this one. Try everything. <laughs> And the rest of it is just a listing of the materials that you would need. I got all of this stuff either on Amazon or from the bakery when I ate cake pops. So <laughs> over Valentine's, just keep all your cake pop sticks and make a bunch of butterfly wand. I'm sure you can buy things like that too somewhere in a craft right? store. Or yeah. <laughs> oh, they sell it at like Hobby Lobby and Joanne right, Fabrics. Right, people making and, their own things at yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. Like they're everywhere. And so the steps to actually put it together is that before making the wand or setting up the card, you actually want to set up the code for each for the wand and the card. So on this one, I've actually done it ahead of time. So this one is the code for the wand. And so I don't mix up my boards. I actually put a sticky note on the back on the back of it that says wand. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'd accidentally grab the wrong board and chaos ensues and then for the then I also labeled the card one so I have two separate micro bit, micro bits and each one has a different code one has the wand one has the card and to set that up um, you can go to this link to download the code file and then I have instructions for how to connect your micro bit over and download the file. Now, so let everybody know you will have access to all these slides. So yeah, all this yeah. go to this link thing, you know, not doing it right now as she's sharing the screen, but afterwards with the archive, when we put out the archive, um, we'll have a link to these slides for you. So you have all of these links that um, Amanda's talking about here. Yep. And so the fun fact is that I showed you the coding environment, but if you, all you're doing is downloading the code file and putting it directly over to the micro bit, you don't even actually have to go to the website. All you have to do is connect the micro bit to your computer using the USB cord that's included with the kit. And then you drag and drop the file that you downloaded over onto your micro bit. And micro bit is like, super quirky because when you drag and drop a file it will show a little progress bar saying that the file is loading and then it'll make like a little beep and then it'll close the micro bit window and then reopen it and the file will disappear like normally when you drag and drop a file it will actually show on the listing of files that have been loaded like a stand like if you were to copy and paste it onto a flash drive but microbit doesn't do that it will actually chomp the file and make it disappear like the first time i ever did this i dragged and dropped the file like four times in a row and i'm like why does it keep eating my file <laughs> <laughs> and then i found like a tutorial i found like the little back on the microbit page that says like that's normal, that's fine, it's just gonna do that. to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so a micro bit board will carry one file at a time. So if you already had a file loaded onto your micro bit and you drag and drop a new file, the new file will take it over and that will be the file that's active on the board. And it'll chomp it, but it'll just be chilling there. And so when you have the file loaded, you just eject the micro bit and then connect the little battery pack so that your micro bit is powered. And if you don't connect this battery pack, then the micro bit is just kind of mm. a cool mm -hmm. paperweight, but Needs yeah. Power. yeah. Yeah. So you do the same, you do that one process for the wand, one process for the card, same exact steps, 
slightly different file. So I'll walk you through what this file is actually doing. Um, you are actually connecting these two boards over radio waves. So it's the exact same way that an RC remote control car works. You use the remote control that connects over radio wave to tell the car to turn left, right, straight, forward, backward. Um, if you wanted to, there's actually tutorials online that actually show you how to build a microbit powered car and a microbit powered controller. So every time you tilt the microbit to the left or the right, the car will move accordingly. Mm -hmm. So if you want, you can start with this butterfly wand to find out how the radio connection works and then work your way up to more advanced level stuff. Mm -hmm. So you have options. There's a million and one tutorials online and you can do a bunch of stuff with it. So what's happening with this is um, whenever you have a radio, you have to set it to a channel so that your radio controller is on the same channel as the receiver. So you're setting the radio group to one and then you're setting it to say when it shakes, a few times a little something will happen so then once you've once you've set your wand to the right frequency then you have to tell the recipient like the receiver what to do when it receives those instructions so this one is saying that when you receive that number when you receive that command it's going to show a little heart icon on the receipt on the receiver then it's going to pause for about five milliseconds and then clear the screen and this way when you shake it again later it'll happen again otherwise you would just have a heart that's just permanently on your display screen so that's why you set it to clear it after a little bit and when i tested this out i actually had my niece give my sister-in-law a pop-up card for Mother's Day. So she also got like the little butterfly wand with the pop-up card. So the heart could sit like the little card would pop up a little heart icon next to the pop-up card. Hmm. And I accidentally sat on my pop-up card so I don't have oh. it right now. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That was my bad. <laughs> you just never know what happens with technology. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. But you, I mean, you can use a pop-up card. I've had some people after they got these instructions, they put it into, um, they've set it next to a stuffed animal. And some people put it next to, like you can put it next to anything you want to. Um, as a joke, my dad was actually gonna put it next to one of those singing fish. He should do it. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to do that. And so now we're going to test the code to make sure that it actually works. So I'm going to, on the, each one of these battery packs, it'll have like an on off switch. So I'm going to flip it over to on. And the only indicator that your board is actually turned on is going to be like a tiny little red LED light that's on the back of the board. So to check and see if power actually went through, look for that little red light. And then we're going to turn on this other one too. And check for the red light. Now I'm just going to shake the wand one. And the little heart showed up. And we're gonna wait for this to clear. So I'll shake it. Yep. Heart showed up. Yep. So now we tested our code, everything's working okay. To save battery power, I'm just gonna turn these back off again. And now we can build our wand. So this is our wand pack. And these are the instructions to make your wand. I'm just gathering this up and I'm going to tuck the cord in between the battery pack and the micro bit. Grab my handy dandy rubber band. 
pop it around the whole thing lengthwise. There, so now this is holding together. And now I'm going to grab my little cake pop thing. We'll stick this into the back of the rubber band. And you might need to wind the rubber band over one more time just to hold this more securely, which I'm going to do now. There. So now this is stuck into the back of here. It's all rubber banded together. We're going to take our butterfly applique. I've already put double sided tape onto the back of it. And we're just going to stick this right to the front. So just like that, we have cool. our butterfly wand. And if you want, you can kind of put some thicker cardstock backing behind your applique to kind of make it sturdier. You can see that I've had this wand for a while, so this is starting to curl Start under. Yeah. It was sitting in the car in like 100 plus degree heat. Oh, so yes, that would yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> So we have wand, and now I have instructions to be able to set up the card, you know, the card that I sat on. So, <laughs> you know, so instead of using a pop-up card, we are going to have this. This is like a little 3D printed um, Finch robot attachment. So we're going to sit this into the Finch robot attachment, and this is going to be our connector. And yes, I did just sitting, see this sitting on my desk and grab it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, and again, this can be anything you want it to be. Um, my Mm -hmm. Nephew didn't want to do a butterfly, so he chose a giant dinosaur thing that he had sitting around. Sure. Um, you could cut things out with um, cardboard. You could cut things out with um, some people have used coloring book pages and they cut it out and made it sturdier by sticking it over onto cardstock. And there's like a jillion anything you can stick onto a stick you can use. That's pretty much it. And so let me set this down here. Hmm. I was just looking to see what, because this is the kind of thing that you'd think would also go along with um, some reading program, um, yeah. possibly, which I know many libraries just wrap them up or are wrapping them up. Um, yeah. This year's the theme was Adventure Begins at Your Library. Oh, um, and this would have been a perfect, like you could yeah, use this for, for going anything. on adventure. But next year's topic is Art, Color Our World. I'm sure you could find a way to pick, fit it yeah. in there, but but then 2026 is dinosaurs. Unearth a story oh, yeah. of dinosaurs. Yeah. I could dinosaur see a good wands. dino wand. I yep. could see it. My nephew loved his dinosaur wand. He was sad when I took the micro bit back from it because I oh. needed to put it back in the kit. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure my brother's going to buy him a new one. So yeah, it's like one. 30 bucks on sale. He'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And so you have the instructions to make the wand itself, but if you want to be able to customize the actual code, you would click over into the microbit site and you can go over into, I'll just drag this over. So on their main microbit page, and I'll go to it as though you would actually go regularly. So this is Microbit's main page. If you are completely unfamiliar with the board and the programming language, they actually have a getting started guide. So you can walk through these different steps and it has some um, video tutorials and it shows kind of how to get oriented to the board and how to start coding and then how to use this um, for education. So you have that option if you're completely new to it. And when you are ready to jump into the code, they have a let's code section up in the top right here. 
and then you'll choose your editor. So you go into this make code editor. And while it loads, I recommend sipping coffee. <laughs> Always a good time. So this automatically logged me into my account. I connected it over to my Google account through my, I connected it through Google. And so if you want, it will actually store the projects that you put together so that you don't lose them once you made them. If you okay. don't create an account, then I mean, it just won't store your, or store your projects. And it has baked in instructions on here, but we're going to go into our butterfly card. And you know, I should actually show you how to import it because that's what you're going to be doing. I'm going to go back into the home. So I already have this on here, but you are going to be going into import, import file, and then go to the place where you downloaded it. So I'm grabbing the micro bit card open. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So once you've imported the file, then you can adjust it. Mm -hmm. So you can actually tell this to do any number of different things. Um, so I had the a picture from yep. some, some, yeah. So the cool thing, oh, uh, you can choose from any one of these different pre-made pixel images, or you can create your own pixel just by so let's say you want this checkerboard and you can adjust the amount of time that it takes to clear it. So let's say that you want it to be quicker at two seconds instead. And so that's one option. You can also say that I wanna add some music to this and you wanna say, I want to oh. Oh, cool. play this. And we're going to drag this so it's going to display that and then it's going to play a little tone. And then it's going to. Oh, you can do so much stuff in here. Um, let's go up into basic. If you want to be able to customize your own LED by choosing which. Um, let uh, like which little dots will show up you would use the show I think it's yep. oh nice so you can make your own then, design yeah so that's where you would go to do that um i'm lazy so i just use the drop down so i'm going to detach right click delete block so you can kind of play around with the different things that you want it to be able to do. So you can show different numbers, you can show um, different stuff. If you connect over different sensors, you can also say, um, turn the motor left or turn the, like one of the things that I was looking, the one of the projects that I was demonstrating for a different group was um, whenever you shake the wand, it would rotate a servo motor that has a Jedi warrior sitting on top of it <laughs> and it'll spin him around. Nice. And one will have him like shoot his little, like it'll spin him about 45 degrees really fast. So it'll look like he's swinging a sword. So you have options. There's a ton of stuff you can do with it. And let me jump on over to here. So once you have the micro bit kit itself, you can also go into this project section and then you can filter it to this make code here. And you can also start combining like practicing some of these other tutorials and then starting to combine them all together. 
So instead of just displaying a heart, you could display a beating heart. Oh, okay. Cool. And well, animated animations to okay. them. So this is basically taking it to the next step so that you show it, pause it, show it, pause it, and then you can clear it. So it's doing a similar thing to what we just did here, where you show it, pause it, clear it, and now it's making it beat. Delete, duplicate, duplicate. So now it's making it beat. And you would go back into your heart there. And good times were had by all. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And so you can also start using this to learn how the different sensors work. So on this left hand side here, you would go into the device feature and then you can choose the sensor that you want to play around with. So we'll go into temperature sensor and start going in here. So you can start to kind of use hmm. this to explore different stuff and start combining different things together. If you want to be able to make that micro bit radio car, they have a whole mess of tutorials on here. Um, the one that works best is, They have other specific kits that are also geared toward making a car. And you can also use the hummingbird bit because it comes with those car components. The box rover. Ah. Everyone calls their little car something different, so I can never actually remember what each one called it. <laughs> they all got had their own little brand, yeah. Right? So if you want a more step-by-step -step version of making that radio control car, using the Hummingbird bit that has these step-by-step -step tutorials is the one of the best ways to get started with it. Otherwise, you can go through and you can sift through the mess of different instructions that are online. Um, not all of the instructions have actually been updated recently. So you might run into one of these uh, tutorials that are just on a website that will have out of date code or that will have that just won't work quite as well. But the box rover one, you can just check out the kit and they update their code regularly and they also have troubleshooting support so if it doesn't work then you can email them i call that a win-win mm -hmm. and let me jump back on over here so i showed you more or less how to set up the the butterfly wand and start to customize the code and then I started going over some of the different alternative activities that you can go through. And the next question that I usually get is, how do I find activities that are actually fitting the experience level that I have so that I don't get frustrated and want to throw the thing out the window? And I'm like, that is a good question. <laughs> you know? I understand that feeling. Right. That. Yes. You know? <laughs> So I'm going to jump back into the easiest way that I can do this is I'm actually just going to reload it so that it goes back to clear the filters. I could uncheck stuff, but who wants to do that? So the fun part is that uh, Microbit actually rates these from beginner to intermediate and advanced. 
So you can also filter it by experience level instead of, hmm. oh, well, you used to. They used to have like a little filter. Oh, they put it up here now. Yeah. They put it up here. You'd think that they'd put all their filters in the same spot, but maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> so you can click up here to filter it and then you'll actually only get the stuff that meshes with where you're at right now oh i didn't know that was a intermediate one that is good to know <laughs> so the next so once you've already mastered all of the different activities that are available on here Microbit is also compatible with a whole bunch of different other stuff. So mm -hmm. you can also do Microbit combines with Makey Makey. Mm -hmm. So you can make the, um, they may have, they have like this awesome looking like little glove thing. And then they've also got this, um, they have like a mess of different activities on here. So just Google Makey Makey and Microbit. Oh, here's the power glove. This one is actually a really fun one to make and it looks pretty cool. So this one actually uses the conductive tape. So mm -hmm. the thing that I've been recommending for people is um, I've gotten some different cuts from different like conductive tape because it's basically metal. And when you tear the metal, then it can, I mean, you get a pretty wicked paper cut sometimes. So there is a nylon conductive tape. Um, it's sold, I found it through Brown Dog Gadgets. There's also probably other places that sell it, but this is just the one that I found. Oh, they have microbit cars now too. Mm -hmm. You can get a bit rover from them too. Who knew? Uh -huh. So let me go to the tape that they have. They're also cool because I get some of my replacement components from them too. So when something goes out then this is a good spot to like they have all the different... replace things yeah yeah, yeah. Like damaged or just used up yeah yeah and sometimes when you go on amazon some of their components are just not quite up to par their manufacturers are not great um this place actually goes through known manufacturers that don't suck like they <laughs> vet them out really well <laughs> so this it's just a better spot to get place to get this stuff I'm not saying that there is no seller on Amazon that will have good stuff. It's just that it's a gamble if you do, if you haven't already purchased from them before. Here, the nylon conductive tape, this one. Hmm. So this one is actually a, it's basically feels like a terrible fabric. So it is actually made out of a nylon fiber instead of the actual metal so it's easier to kind of tape it into these different curved shapes that you can't always do with the metal stuff right and you right. can also reposition it and if you run your finger against the edge of the tape you're not you'll going get, to get a wicked cut you like you would yeah. sliced by yeah. it yeah yeah so when you're looking for conductive tape that's going to extend your circuit activities do not pass go directly to nylon conductive tape. Yeah. I'm sure if you Google it, you can probably find other vendors, but whatever. But this is one that you know and you vetted, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so let me pop over here and here. So, and this is also a good time to pause and find out if anyone has any Questions about make code projects, yeah. the butterfly wand, anything that popped up? Yeah, does anybody have any questions? Um, you can type into the question section. 
of your GoToWebinar interface, anything you want to ask about, um, about how to use this in your library. Uh, if you, and if you've done anything like this, um, I'm sure we'd love to hear about it. Um, anything yeah. more you want to know, um, anything you'd like um, Amanda to focus in on. Um, uh, we do have someone wondering, and this is actually, I well, you could answer this question too, but I think it's more um, in my line. Um, how do get how do libraries get funding for doing big projects like this? Now we know we lend these out to libraries for free here in Nebraska, but eventually, and that's the idea I think is we have them to lend. So if you're just going to do, a, you know, one event and you don't want to purchase them all yourself, that's great. Just keep borrowing from us. But yeah. if you do want to own them yourself, um, yeah, where do you find the extra funding from this? Um, grants that are available definitely. Um, is what I would recommend. Um, we have um, uh, grants here through the Library Commission, if you're here in Nebraska, <laughs> of course, um, that uh, you can apply for. We and depending on what you're doing, we have um, uh, library improvement grants, which are funded through IMLS, which Amanda is showing here. Um, you can also go directly to IMLS yourself. They have all sorts of grants for libraries. Um, so that's definitely a place to go to the Institute of Museum and Library Services, um, all sorts of programs and things they do grants for. Um, but if you do um, yep, there you go. Best Buy tech grants, yeah, there's lots of things out there. Um, but just coincidentally, if you are in Nebraska and thinking about <clears throat> doing anything like this, uh, we do. We are going to be opening up our grants for 2025 um, next month. Uh, you can go look at the web page right now. Um, yeah, try that. There we go. So this is our, this is actually a page I have that she's showing right now. This is lots of different grants opportunities that I, I maintain this page and try and keep it up to date. Um, so you can see any of these other um, grants here below. It might be something useful to you as well. But our 2025 grants will be opening up next month. Um, if you look at the page right now, you can see the grants we have. Um, the dates are for this year, so don't panic and think it's weird. Um, <laughs> we're still working on updating the forms and the and the uh, website, but uh, we're planning on September 20th opening up our grants. And yes, library improvement grants for anything, and then specifically the Youth Grants for Excellence. If you're doing something that is specifically a program for children or teens, um, you could apply for a Youth Grant for Excellence, and that would definitely cover, um, if you're approved, awarded, the cost of um, any of these um, kids. I've been yep. grants definitely as well. Yeah. And there's also some other groups that, oh, are also supporting education, arts, and different things mm -hmm. like that. So you can also just search for local or statewide foundations and yeah. a lot of them say that they support education, arts, community improvement. So Right. Yeah. yeah. I think outside the you know, don't just look up um library grants. Yeah. Because yeah. many and some of the many of the things you'll see that are on our general grants page too, you'll see they're not they don't like scream libraries. Um, yeah. but yeah. if anything, they may mention libraries as being one of the list of many um that are eligible, but they may say things like for educational purposes, yep. for a municipality, municipalities are eligible or departments of municipality, that's your library. If you're a public library. Yep. Um schools uh you can look for anything yeah if it says education that covers any type of and generally talk about things and that are not profit so a lot of grants so public libraries that could um k-12 libraries are generally non-profits so yeah. uh, would fall into uh that category as well and ala's website also yep. has a whole mess of grants so many that grants. yeah they through ALA, have through all the different ala divisions and sections oh yeah yeah and oh cool they used to their old website just had like a list of the the web like the grants on the left hand side mm -hmm. but now you can search them much, yeah they have it much a lot more filters to it's much easier yeah because yeah, there's just so many it was very yeah, overwhelming i still send people to it but it was pretty overwhelming but yes this is nice now that you can kind of you know filter it down to what kind of library you are what kind of um funding you're looking for maybe yeah Except if you're a state library, then no dice. Apparently not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they but they rotate, they update and rotate through them all the time. So there's a mess of them. Yeah. 
I do so yeah, so trying to, you know, I know libraries do struggle with budgets, absolutely. Um, yeah. And many libraries do depend on grants as, as a major thing that they do. I just saw someone post, and I wish I could remember which social media place it was in some library group asking, how many grants do you actually do for your, you know, do you apply for every year? Um, yeah. It's just a standard thing for especially public libraries struggling with um, budgets that uh, you have your budget and that's what it's going to be. The city, you miss, municipality, whatever has only what it has, but you've got other things you need to do. Grants is going to be a regular thing that you would be doing. And if you're in Nebraska, the NITC, sure, uh, Nebraska Information Technology Commission also tracks grants and funding. I haven't checked this website in a little bit, but mm -hmm. um. From education, sure. This was a spot that I checked before. Tech grant news, technology grants. For a tech grant, they could have chosen better contrasting. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that's an image that didn't load right and then they just have the alt text showing. I hope so, because otherwise that's a mess. Mm -hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, and there's also something something coming up. We're talking about funding here. Uh, someone's asking, you know, how hard is it to write these grants? You know, how do you do it? Um, we are going to have a webinar about hours coming up. Look for that to come up. But um, actually, just coming up on September 10th, and I'm going to see if I can get it to come up here on my whatever. Um, United for Libraries is the is a division of ALA um, that is for friends and foundation groups. Um, so your, your library board, friends groups, foundation, your trustees, friends and foundations. So your library board, if you have a friends group, if you have foundation. Um, and here in Nebraska, we pay for a statewide subscription, I guess you would say, to um, United for Libraries. Um, so every um, library staff person and board member um, can use any of the United for Libraries resources for free. And on September 10th, they are doing a um, webinar on uh, grant writing for library friends and foundations. Uh, and so I really like the, oh, sorry. A lot Nebraska library, go and look for that. Or see if your state does have it. Multiple other states do have personal, have uh, statewide memberships. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I also really like the, they have a lot of grant templates and they also have, um, project planning for grant management. Mm -hmm. So ClickUp is actually, um, ClickUp is a project management software. So it'll also let you load all of your um, documents and all of your stuff into one spot. And it'll have um, grant writing proposal templates and it'll go over how to write all this different stuff. Cool. So I heart templates <laughs> <laughs> anything that someone will put together to help you do things absolutely yeah right yeah and i think the one that i just used was it smart sheets it might have been smart sheets It's promising because it's purple, so I visited it before. Yeah, you've been there, yep. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I adapted this and I it came as actually an Excel spreadsheet and then I just turned it into oh. a Word document to get the categories. Okay. And, but it gave like the tips on how to write a budget, tips on how mm -hmm. to write an executive summary and they gave different mm -hmm. specific examples for different types of um, grants, how to write the project timelines and how to do all that stuff. Yeah, many grant programs will have their own um, yeah. application forms you have to use, uh, but this is good to get you the idea of, okay, what are the different parts and then the tips and just how to write them convincingly too. Yeah. It could be a good explanation. I think the key, when we evaluate grants here, I think my the thing I look at most first is the description, the ex explanation. So 
yeah, getting tips on how to how to plead your case, how to make it sound like the best best project ever. Yeah. <laughs> you should and, you should you should pick me because <laughs> right. And IMLS also has a you can search awarded grants. So it really helped me to actually read through the format and phrasing. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. So like and just been going accepted, which is yeah. Key. Yeah. And so like the ones that actually went through, I found the organizations that were similar to the state library and then doing semi similar projects. Like I couldn't find one that was exactly like it, but I just read the different preliminary proposals and the full proposals to just to see what worked for other people. Uh -huh. yeah. So yeah, the IMLS and if you go to grants, search awarded grants, you can just mm -hmm. see a mess of examples of what already worked. Yeah. I'm Ooh, glad okay. they put that on Thank there. You. All right. Does anybody have any other questions? We still have time left. If you have any questions, we talked about money here now, about yeah. the, uh, which I know is a huge issue and that's why I wanted to get into it, make sure everybody has some tips and ideas about that. Yeah. Um, any uh, other questions about the magic wand coding? Uh, anything that Amanda showed us here today? They said the recording will be available to everyone. Uh, should be up and ready by the end of the day tomorrow at the very latest. Um, and the slides will also be a link that you'll have a link to her um, Google Slides so that you can access um, all the links that she had there. And I also have um, equipment guides and some different tip guides. So if you are writing a grant, you can also reach out to me and I can give recommendations for how to choose equipment to meet different goals. Hmm. I get a lot of those questions. Yeah. And um, I think this would be good too, especially when you're looking at this and you see like robots, there's a whole bunch of different ones listed, circuits, lots of multiple yep. ones. Yeah. I know in our situation, we've had libraries submit a grant. Um, you know, it takes time. They can submit it, we review it, we approve it, and then that particular product or service has either changed drastically or disappeared completely, <laughs> like gone yeah. out of business no longer. Yeah. We've had that with some of them, uh, makerspace equipment. You know, they say we want to buy this brand of uh, router or laser cutter, and then by the time we approve yeah. it, they are. Um, discover it doesn't actually exist anymore we've yeah. got options for you <laughs> there are other ones out there it's okay and you can totally switch that up usually in any grant they understand that yeah. um things are going to change equipments um what exists model num models and whatnot um amanda would be a good resource to find out okay i yeah. wanted this one now it's gone what do i do instead <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah and i also have some guides that are categorized by the main tech concept you want to introduce like if you are curious about virtual reality or augmented reality or artificial intelligence there's like there's stuff there's lots of places to go yeah there's also a ton of free stuff so you don't even have to yeah. buy a ton of stuff if you don't want to yeah cool absolutely all right well, I don't see any other desperate questions or comments coming in right now. Uh, does anybody want to ask anything about the ones or about coding? You want to uh, request a kit? Um, our tech kits are on our website. There's Amanda's information right there and her favorite little frog. Yeah, he's happy. You've seen a lot of the frogs on, I think, was that just last month's Encompass or Pretty yep. Sweet Tech on? Yeah. The Reading whatever frog. month this, yep. <laughs> that was a happy presentation, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, see, technology does not have to be scary. I think that's what's great. You know, it can be fun, it can be interesting. Yeah. Um, learning coding, it can be easy, it can be fun, definitely. For, I mean, a lot of people are pushing it to kids, but. As adults who have never done it, um, definitely um, new things that are fun Honestly, to get us like, into. It doesn't have to there's be so. a lot of adults that would probably want to make their own wand too. Oh, absolutely. So there's that. Would. Especially like Halloween is coming up too. Yes. So if you had like your 
witch's wand or if you had like a you could do a trick-or-treating event for pretty much anybody and mm. set up your little wand station and good times were had by all i just turned off the battery pack so i don't waste my batteries wear it out yeah yeah all right all right um that's one here yes i am oh i I'm will close out of this and share my slides yeah pull presenter deck to my over to my screen there we go i think you were sending the link to yeah okay we'll get the link to the um slides there we go click that so i have that so. There we go. So this is the um, slides that you all will also have access to. Um, let's do this little doohickey here. Oh, I guess I should also put a link to the tech kits too, just in case. Um, Well, I should be able to. So um, this is our um, Nebraska Library Commission website. And you can see on our website, we always have on um, this top header here. And there's a search feature up here. And I hope I search for tech kits, tech kits through the mail. That's what you want. Yeah. And this is, list is always changing. Every time I go here, there's something different. <laughs> yeah. Because there's like new things that come out that we get um, access to, and or um, old things that have to be updated with a new version, or yeah. I like shiny objects. <laughs> Here's another little cute little robot truck car. Zoomy. Zoomy, yeah. All right. So um, that is our Encompass Live Pretty Sweet Tech for this month. Um, I'm going to go, if you also use your search engine of choice and just type in Encompass Live, you will get a link to our show page, which is our main page, and our archives here. These are our upcoming shows. Um, Amanda will be back on September 25th. That is the next Pretty Sweet Tech. That's the last Wednesday in September. Um, keep an eye on this page to see what her topic will be. Yeah. Um, our archives are here. So um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me when the recording is ready. Like I said, by the end of the day tomorrow, there will be a link to, like this is the one from last week, there will be a link to the recording on our YouTube channel and um, Amanda's slides on this link here on the Google Slides. Um, we I also do like that butterfly. Our, huh? I do like that butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> um, we also push out on our social media. We have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. So if you like to use Facebook, give us a like. Um, we will put reminders. Here's your reminder to log into today's show, introducing today's show, letting you know when the recording of the previous one was available. Um, we use the Encomp Live hashtag as a little abbreviation and pre-sweet tech hashtag when it's a pre-sweet tech session um, to post on our Facebook page, onto the Library Commission's Twitter account, uh, onto our Instagram. I think that's the three that we're doing things on now. Um, so you do like to use safe, um, any of the social media, give us a like there. Uh, you can search our show archives if you want to on any topic. Um, the most all the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very current um that is because this is our full show archives and i'm not going to scroll all the way down but this is a huge list um this is our full show archives going back to when encompass live premiered which is in january 2009 which means we're in our 16th year um but we have all of our shows here um something librarians do we keep things for historical purposes <laughs> uh, so they will always be available here as long as we have somewhere to host them right now they're all on the nebraska library commission's youtube channel 
but do pay attention to the original broadcast date. They all have a date too. Uh, some shows will stand the test of time, be great, useful resources, still good for you to, to um, use, but some things will become old and outdated. Um, services or programs may have changed drastically or might no longer exist. Uh, links might be broken. People may work at a different um, institution than when they presented for us. So just pay attention, pay attention to that original broadcast date when you watch any of our old shows. But as long as we have a place to keep them, we will always have all of our show archives out there for um, anyone who wants to go back and look. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's today. Uh, these are our upcoming shows for the next um, couple of months. Um, board games and computer science in libraries is what we're going to be talking about next week. Um, Stephen Hollis from the University of Pennsylvania Libraries is going to talk about using tabletop games to teach computer science. Interesting. Hmm. Um, always can get very creative with these things. So I'm very excited about that one. I love to play tabletop games, board games. It's a big thing my husband and I do like every week with friends every weekend. So I don't know if I want to learn computer science from it, but I like to see what they're doing here at this library. And so see if you join us next week to talk about that. Uh, so please do sign up for that one and air the other upcoming shows. Amanda will be back with us in a month on September 25th. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, send Amanda any, reach out to Amanda with any questions you have if you're working on uh, your butterfly wands or anything um, else tech related. And hope we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye bye. Bye.